Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame, before him in love. Those words give me so much joy, that our Father has chosen us before the foundation of the world. We are his elect. We have been predestinated to be conformed into the image of his Son, that the Bible is a man's book. Where did man get all these concepts from? The things that these prophets and apostles are writing about, regeneration, salvation, resurrection, we have finite minds. So where does resurrection come from? How did that concept come to the mind of a finite man if God did not place it there? So many people say well, it's a fallible book by a fallible man. No, no. Where does the concept of eternal salvation come from? Some people are going to say, well, that's like reincarnation. Well, reincarnation comes from the premise of resurrection. Fallen angels, when they hit ground, they spread out. And they spread with them false doctrines. The Tower of Babel, when the Lord dispersed the people and confounded their language, they left Babel with all of that false doctrine and they scattered over the face of the earth taking all of that false doctrine and paganism with them and through the centuries the traditions being handed down have perverted I don't know I don't read other doctrine touch not taste not handle not touch not the unclean thing and I shall receive you there was a brother in one of the churches that I went to had a Mormon uh, the, the Book of Wisdom, the priceless pearl, whatever it's it's called, the Book of Mormon, in his home. And he was a Baptist who was going through seminary to become a preacher. And I told him, brother, brother, you, you should not have that in your home. And we kind of parted friends. He parted from me as a brother in Christ because I was trying to reprove him. I was trying to exhort him with love and with kindness and with patience. He just blew up and got irate. There's the evidence of the spirit of that book that you have that is defiling the temple of God. I truly believe that. We are not to touch the unclean thing. My argument with him was that brother, if tells us not to let them in our house that have another doctrine and not even to greet them because if we greet them, we're partakers of their evil deeds. How much more so the actual doctrine that they believe? Evil communications corrupts good manners. We should not be around that. He has called us out of the world. We are to be separate unto Christ Jesus, that he would be able to do his work without any hindrance. We are a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Who have been called to the glory and honor and praise of our one and only God. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The just for the unjust the righteous for the unrighteous, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him, that our faith and our hope might be in God. How are these words penned by a man? They carry such incredible power in them, such life-giving force, and not a force of faith, 
the force of the Holy Ghost, the power and the might of the one true God. It is amazing that anybody can read these words and not be changed. But he allows us to know the hardness of their heart through the deceit and the vanity that is in them. They cannot see past their arm length. I pray that every one of you seek the Lord while he may be found. We must repent of our sins. We must give all to the Lord as he has given us all. We must cherish all that he has put before us and ponder the things of God. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth of the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For the Lord God Almighty has saved us from our sins. He has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we place our trust in Him, if we repent of our sins, if we turn from our evil ways and serve Him only, we shall live throughout eternity with Him. God bless you.